winning our families for Christ. Winning our families for Christ. Winning our families for Christ. We can choose our friends, but we can't choose our families. Only God can choose our families for us. Only God can choose our families for us. I believe, therefore, that if only God can choose our families, there is a purpose, there is a reason why you are a part of that family. And if you are a believer, part of a family, God has expectations of you. You're supposed to represent him well in that family. Some people sit and all they do is complain about their families. And they talk about how everyone is wrong and everybody is bad and how everything isn't going great. But if you are truly going great, infect everybody else with your greatness. If you're truly going right, infect everyone with your righteousness. Uh, you didn't get that. <laughs> with your righteousness. If you are lighted, infect everyone who's walking in darkness with your light. It is an anomaly that from the beginning of whenever you got into that family to the age where you are now that only you have seen the light, only you believes in Christ, only you is following God, only you is serving God. Your life must be such that somehow other members of your family can begin to catch the fire. You cannot choose your family. God puts you in that family because you have a purpose there. You have an assignment. And it's important that early enough you begin to wear the mindset of I am here for a reason. I'm here for a reason. Because you can either, you know, just step aside from your family and, you know, put everybody else aside and also draw the lines. You exist in a different world and they do. Or you can begin to tell yourself, I am here for a purpose, I'm here for an assignment, and I will make sure that as much as lies within my power, I influence my family. I influence my family. Every so often, I'm excited to see siblings in church. If you're in church this morning and you have a brother, a sister, a cousin, wife, or husband that is a part of this church who comes to church with you, can you stand? I'd like to see you. You have a brother, a sister. Okay, I see siblings. I see, I see. Yeah, you have a sister. You, 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 you have a sister. You have a sister. You have, you have a brother. Oh, my God. Some of you, I don't even know who your brothers and sisters are. Praise the Lord. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Please, you may sit. You may sit. Praise the Lord. That's not to say those who didn't stand don't have brothers or sisters who are in other churches who are in the faith. The subject matter is not honey streams. The subject matter is being in the faith, serving God wherever it is that they are. Wherever it is that they are. Praise the Lord. I hear Joshua saying, Joshua 24 verse 15, As for me and my house... Not just me. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, the man took responsibility for himself and for his house. As for me and my house. People of God, don't leave your house behind. Oh, I know your father is a hard man. Oh, I know your mother is a tough mama, but don't leave your family behind. Oh, I know your brother is the black sheep. Don't leave your family behind. Oh, I know your sister. She's not been home for 12 years because she's obstinate and she is running wild wherever she is. She doesn't speak to anybody, doesn't take anybody's call. Don't leave your family behind. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Before they had an opportunity to declare whether they agree with what he's saying or not, he has decided it. They will serve God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That kind of faith, God respects it. That kind of faith, God will make it produce results. Hallelujah. In John chapter 1, from verse 40, in John chapter 1, from verse 40 all the way to verse 42, 
John 1 from verse 40 to verse 42. Look at it. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him. Now, so these guys were disciples of John. They heard Jesus speak and then followed him. Now, so this scripture is telling us that one of the two disciples of John who heard Jesus speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Hallelujah. He brought him to Jesus. <laughs> he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. It was Andrew that brought Simon to Jesus. Now look at this. Simon Peter eventually becomes the head of the apostles. But who introduced him to his destiny? His brother Andrew. His brother Andrew. Yes, his brother was also an apostle. But Simon carried in him a destiny that could only be activated at his encounter with Jesus. But it was Andrew that midwifed that encounter. It was Andrew that made it happen. There are people around you right now, people in your home and people in your families that God has got his hand on their lives. They don't even know it yet. It will take your effort of bringing them into an environment of encounters with God, whether personally or encouraging them or taking them to a place where they hear the word of God, one effort or the other, by intercession, one effort or the other. That will cause them to enter into that which God has planned for them. That which God has planned for them. It was Andrew that introduced Simon to Jesus. And the first day he meets Jesus, Jesus said, thou shalt be called Cephas. There was an activation. Thou shalt be called Cephas. Thou shalt be called Cephas. And we know that that man became the head of the early church. Hallelujah. He became the head of the early church. <laughs> uh, I just came back and I want to avoid controversies. Uh, but help me, Jesus. <laughs> I'll take a vote. If you, if you think I should say what I want to say now that I do not want to, Oh, my God. <laughs> That's how curiosity works. <laughs> um, mm, mm, mm. Where were we again? Okay. I mean, if it's a fact, we should be able to argue it and prove it, isn't it? Amicably as brethren, right? Is it true that Simon Peter was the first pope? You've never heard it. <laughs> You've never heard it. Ha. Ah, now that you don't know about that controversy, let's move on. Oh, yeah. Some people say he was the first pope. That Peter was the first pope. Because he was the head of the early church, so he was the first pope. And uh, I say no because the pope don't marry no wife. But Peter had a mother-in-law. I told you I don't want to go into controversies. Let's continue preaching the gospel. <laughs> Amen. So, but I mean, if it makes them happy, that's, that's, that's okay. Um, so, Andrew brought Simon to Jesus. And from his first encounter, he was Cephas. Praise the Lord. Powerful, powerful, powerful influence of family. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were siblings. And it's amazing how these three enjoyed the ministry of Jesus. They all enjoyed the ministry of Jesus. Martha was the lover of Christ. Oh, yes. I mean, she was given to hospitality. She was in the hospitality department. Just that sometimes she wanted to serve when the word was going on. And Jesus simply said to her, Jesus didn't say, don't serve. Jesus didn't say, don't take care of me. But he said, do it at the right time, right? When the word is going on, 
don't be moving about. That's why when the word is going on, the greeters should not be greeting and the, you know, they should be enjoying the word, right? So these three people enjoyed the ministry of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus. When Jesus rose up from the dead, you know who he first ap uh, appeared to? Uh -huh. You don't know who he appeared to. Now, there were different Marys. Let's get it straight. Was Mary the sister of Martha, Mary Magdalene? Research. Next Sunday, we'll answer it. Second service next Sunday, appointment. But do a check. However, back to what I was saying. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were siblings. They enjoyed the ministry of Jesus. They were with him all the time. When Jesus went through Bethany, there was a strong likelihood he was going to stop in the house of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. They enjoyed fellowship with him. Look at how these three brethren supported themselves. Everyone was a lover of Christ in his own rights. In his own rights. Mary was such an ardent follower that when Jesus was speaking, she would sit at his feet, receiving the word, Rema, 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 Rema. After Lazarus was raised from the dead, the Bible says he was one of those that reclined with Jesus at the table. And I believe if you read in John chapter 12 from the beginning, he reclined with Jesus at the table. The Bible also says that because of Lazarus' testimony, many of the Jews believed in Christ. They believed in Christ because of his testimony. These people drank from Jesus' ministry. They were lovers. John 12 verse 11. Because that by reason of him, Lazarus, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Hallelujah. This was a family of three people. When Lazarus died, what did Jesus say to his sister? Only believe only believe i'm the resurrection and life. only believe only believe i need your faith and this guy will be okay this guy will be okay glory to god what if we had families where brothers and sisters could bash the glory of god into that family what if we had families where brothers and sisters could hold hands and reverse courses do you understand what i'm saying activate blessings that will stay Glory to God. There are also families that are covered in darkness. In Acts chapter 19, we are told of the seven sons of one Sceva. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they are called exorcists. Who? How can an entire family, an entire family, They were covered in darkness. Not one person had the light. Not one person. Not one person. They were exorcists. Cornelius had an encounter with God in Acts chapter 10. If you read from verse 1, he had an encounter. God sent an angel. And the angel spoke to him, oh, your prayers and your arms have come before the Lord for a memorial. And then the angel says to him to send for Peter and tells him where Peter is. So Cornelius sends his servants to go seek out Peter. At the time they arrive at Peter's gate, Peter is in a trance. He'd been praying, he was hungry and was getting ready to eat. And just at that time, there is a trance where this basket with all kinds of creatures comes down from heaven and he hears the voice arise kill eat says god forbid we don't eat such you know because the the hebrew will not eat certain kinds of animals they call them unclean but the second time arise kill and eat i won't and then the voice says don't call what i have created unclean right so this happens like three times and then he takes a pause and meditates on what has just happened to understand it and the bible says in acts 19 in acts 10 and in verse 19 i believe it's in verse 19 while peter taught on the vision the holy spirit said to him three men seek thee go with them doubting nothing while peter taught on the vision back to verse 19 
verse 19, verse 19, verse 19. While Peter taught on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. And verse 20 says, Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. So he comes to the house of Cornelius, and when he comes to the house of Cornelius, Cornelius has his friends, he has his family, he has everyone sitting. He uses his influence to compel people to be in that house at that time when Peter is coming to speak. And verse 44, the Bible says, while the word was yet in his mouth, the Spirit of God fell on all them that heard him. The man may not have been a preacher, but he just created an atmosphere for people to have encounters. Some people know how to organize parties in their house, but they've never known how to organize a Jesus party. Some people know how to gather people and distribute green bottles and brown ones, but they've never known how to gather people and invite someone who can preach them up to heaven. What do you do with your influence? Some of you are in a place where your family depends on you financially. That's an opportunity. That is an opportunity. Some of you, God has blessed you with influence. People easily believe you. In every group where you belong, you are the one people listen to and follow. You are an influencer. By the blessing of God, what have you done with it? What have you done with it? You don't need your house to be declared as a house fellowship venue before you make it a house fellowship. Work with your church. I'm gathering a few friends for something. Please, can you send a pastor to charge us up for 20 minutes? For 30 minutes? To speak to us and pray for us. I want to organize a thanksgiving with my friends. Give it a name. Let's just thank God together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're in your house for Thanksgiving. But there's opportunity for a charge and ministration. You have done more for them through the Thanksgiving than by the jello fries that will be shared later. And make sure there's jello fries anyways. Because jello fries has the ability to compel people <laughs> to compel people to come. So use the jollof rice to bring them. And then we will come and charge them up. They will love you forever. Some of you don't even realize that the efforts you make to bring transformation to people's lives is what they'll remember you for forever. I know a man called Jimo Ibrahim. Many years ago, he was a very wealthy man in this nation. I don't know where he is now, and I don't know what his uh, economic status is. But he had a big name many, many years ago. And the story went that he gave a friend of his 30 million as appreciation for bringing him to church. Just for bringing him to church. The guy had been wealthy, he had been, you know, but this friend compelled him and took him to the church where his friend was worshipping then, Winner's Chapel. And in appreciation, like his life was so transformed, so changed, his appreciation was he gave his friend 30 million. This is just to thank you for bringing me to church. Beyond the money, what you would gain by facilitating the transformation in people's lives is beyond what money can give. Now I'm telling you that time will pass. Years will pass. Long after people have forgotten how many good heads they ate in their lifetime. They'll remember that it was you who brought them to a certain place where their lives were transformed. There are stories people can never forget. I've heard you share a story, Pastor Pastor Fubuwe, I was going to say Pastor Saint, you know. Someone can go and look for Pastor Fubuwe and not find him. And if you say Pastor Saint, <laughs> you're very likely to find him. You say Saint Fubuwe, Pastor Fubuwe. You heard me for the first time when? 
What year was that? 2010. Do you remember the event I spoke at? My point exactly is he remembers pre-degree campus fellowship event 2010. Do you remember the venue where it held? Yes. Malabo Refectory. There are things you can't forget. Now, but let me ask you a question. How many restaurants did you eat in three years ago? Huh? You don't remember? Oh, come on. Okay, how about 1st of January 2020? What did you eat? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Encounters cannot be forgotten. They cannot be forgotten. They cannot be forgotten. Don't leave your family behind. Cornelius, by his influence, gathered these people. Peter showed up and they were all baptized in the Holy Spirit. That was a transformation for their lives. In Acts chapter 16, if you read from verse 25 to verse 34, Paul and Silas had been hurled into prison. And at midnight, the Bible says they prayed and sang and everyone heard them. Then, of course, we know that there was a great earthquake in that prison and their chains were loose. The doors were open. Now, the jailer, the guy who was the custodian, the keeper of the prison, woke up and realized that all the doors of the prison were open. Verse 27 says he drew his sword and was going to kill himself. You know why? Prisoners escape under your watch. Well, you can choose between killing yourself or being executed in the public. So he knew this was a death sentence anyways, so let him just take his own life. But as he tried to begin to kill himself, they shouted and said, hey, 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 hey. Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Now, this man had a glorious encounter because he heard them, they spoke with him, he took them to, to, to his house and brought out his entire family. And that's how his family also received the word of God. Not just him, 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 him and his family. Verse 34 says, and when he had brought them into his house, he set me before them and rejoiced, believing God with all his house, all his house. All his house, all his house. In Mark chapter 5, the madman of Gadara had an encounter with Jesus. And he decided to go with Jesus, but Jesus said no. In verse 19, how be it Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord had done for thee and had had compassion on thee. How many of your friends have heard about Jesus from your mouth? How many of your friends? How many of your friends have heard about Jesus? How many of your friends see Jesus in your life? Let me close with a few thoughts. And I pray that the Lord ministers to you. We will compel our families and compel our friends when we become examples of the believer. Matthew 5 verse 16. Let your light so shine before men. What we are will be obvious to the people we live with. The people we walk amongst. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, not bad character. You can't be fighting in your compound daily and compel people to go to church. No, that they may see your good works, not bad behavior. Your good works. You are cursing in your compound. Your voice is loud. Throwing insults at neighbors left, right, and center. You're not going to compel no one to follow you to church. People would despise what you represent and where you go to. That's the truth. Your character is everything. Be an example of the believers. First Timothy 4 verse 12. You have to be an example. It's not enough that you're a believer. You must be an example when people want to see a believer. They should look at you, observe your lifestyle. 
Let no man despise thy youth or despise your church or despise what you believe or despise your faith. But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, lifestyle, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. You can't be buying beer. From the same place where your neighbor who does not know God is buying beer. Then you invite him to church. How now? Or you are using his cigar to light your cigar. You know that brotherly cigarness? Cigarliness. I've never seen anybody reject if somebody wants to use their cigar to light their cigar. There's a certain brotherliness of cigaration that happens. <laughs> people are always happy when they meet people who are involved in the same vices as they are. There are people who can buy you any amount of beer you want to drink. They can't give you a dime. And they must see you drink it. You can't even take it home. <laughs> Who? May the Lord deliver you in Jesus' name. That's not friendship. That's not friendship. It's foreship. Be an example of the believer. Brother, you can't be living with a girl you're not married to. Then come out in the morning. In the morning. Early in the morning. Ah. You just hear people talking from their windows. You they crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, boy. <laughs> Don't disturb people. Just sleep. Yeah. Be an example of the believer. If you love her, go and pay money on her head. Even if it's PSS you want to do, it's fine. Pay small, small. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, let him do it honorably. Now I told you, if he truly loves you, he's going to keep you zip up. Zip up. Buy a good belt. Tie it. He get as they do me, do me. What's doing you? What's doing you? Undo it. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So let your character reflect the word of God. Peter spoke to believing women, and that applies to believing men as well. In 1 Peter chapter 3, and he says, hey, if you're living with an unbelieving spouse, he said, let your character be so in alignment with the word of God that you don't even need to say anything to win them over. Character is powerful message. You can't be running around naked on Instagram and now be saying, Jesus, baby, Jesus, this, saved by grace, this and that and that. Rubbish. Stop it. Stop mocking God. You are mocking God. Go and delete all those rubbish from your, from, your, from, your, from your page. You see one nice bro, nice sis, and think, oh, wow, I found a lover of God. And in the middle of smoke, now God, they run him. <laughs> in the middle of smoke. Or holding all manner of exotic alcohol and saying, don't hate on me. It's all by grace. <laughs> ha, stop it now. I know you love the Lord, but don't mock God. Don't mock God. Put your life together. Put your life together. Put your life together. Don't dress nude and be and be and be and be putting out all those godly messages. It will make no impact, zero impact, zero impact. 
And sometimes I weep when you go to the comments. They ask what the message is. Is it what is on your chest or what you have just written? Because you can't be nude preaching the gospel. This gospel has got standards. It has. What, choose what, one thing. Choose what you want to do. You want to, you want to twerk or you want to preach. Choose one. You can't be twerking in the name of the Lord. No. Go and delete those things. They don't represent you well. Go and delete them. You, it may have been your past, but now that you have a better present and a bright future, go and delete that past. Hallelujah. Amen. Lastly, pray for them. Pray for your family members. Pray for them. 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 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3 and 4. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid unto them that are lost, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So there are people that the devil has blinded their minds. And you have to enter into spiritual warfare. Every satanic covering cast upon, you mentioned their name. In the name of Jesus, I command you be broken. I speak and I declare, the light of Christ shines in your heart. I declare your heart is receptive to the word of God. Father, send harvesters into their lives. In the precious name of Jesus, send laborers. You remember Jesus saying that the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Lord, mobilize laborers into his life, into her life. Mobilize laborers in the name of Jesus. I claim their salvation. Yep, 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 yep. One day you will hear the good news. I got born again yesterday. Jesus is so real. Jesus is so real. Jesus is so real. Hallelujah. Praise God. My father, at some point, was a concern to the family. Great man, great, 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 great man. It pains me that he didn't live long enough. It still pains me <laughs> till now that he didn't live long enough. He passed at an early age of 50, few days to his birthday. So, but, you know, very cerebral, highly intelligent, had held many different offices, had, I mean... He was, to an extent, an accomplished man. So, but there was a season in his life where he didn't go to church. We're still very young. He didn't, he didn't care about it. He just didn't go to church. You know, I remember one time, we and my mother, we didn't know God yet, but we knew that we needed prayer for this man. And so my mom would gather us and we'll pray and pray. And pray. We didn't know God, though. we're not born again. But she just knew this this, this kind goeth not but by <laughs> prayer and fasting. <laughs> and we will pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. Now, whether it was our prayer or somebody else was praying for him, all I know is the testimony I'm about to share. And he shares how he traveled to Joss and had a big project going on there. And while he's in this place, one day... Uh, now, I'm going to get the full details of that, you know, testimony. However, he feels led to go to a certain church. And he goes there, and while he's sitting, the word is going on. He, somehow, he found himself, my almighty father found himself literally crawling from his seat to, to the altar. Gave his life to Christ. Was full of the Holy Ghost, baptized in the, Holy, in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. <laughs> hey, that man was gloriously saved and transformed. It was a dramatic visitation on his life. And see how humorous God is. He became the one who led every one of us to Christ. Yeah. He led me to Christ. That man became the one who led every one of us. Me, my siblings, my mom. He led every one of us to Christ. Every one of us to Christ. 
Now, so I gave my life to Christ on the same day as my older brother because we went for a certain holiday to just where my father was and, you know, he led me to Christ. I think I showed up first. He led me to Christ. And then my older brother who schooled in Abuja showed up later. He led him to Christ. Now, but my brother's own was wonderful because he gave his life and he later took it back. <laughs> <laughs> So he will give again and take. He will give again. While, while his life is there, he'll be missing his life, missing his life. He'll just go and collect it back, you know. So I remember an experience that in all this giving his life and taking back, giving his life and taking back, I said, this man, you must serve God, though. You must serve God. He's one year older than myself, and we're young. Now remember waking him up in the middle of the night. There's something I need to tell you. There's something I need to tell you. And I would preach to him again. Preach to him again. Compel your family. I tell you, my brother is on fire for the Lord. Ah. He has preached in this church before. One time, a long time ago. One time, a long time ago. He's on fire. On fire for the Lord. Has a deep knowledge of Christ. Praise the Lord. Compel your family. Don't just watch your younger sister run amok, your older brother run amok, your uncle. No. Uncle, I need to see you. Make an appointment. Make it sound serious. Uncle, I came to share Jesus with you. Take charge. Yeah. Don't let him just see as that is little baby. No, little baby has received the anointing now. Compel them. Speak the word to them. Pray for them. Lead them to Christ. Let's rise. I'd like you to take one minute if you have family members who are not born again brother sister father mother who need to receive jesus just take a minute and pray for them lift your voice lift your voice pray for them pray for them call them by name pray for them pray for them father i pray for mention their names and lord i ask for a visitation upon their life lord i ask for a touch every satanic covering cast upon them i break today in the name of jesus cause the light of the glorious gospel of christ to shine upon them lord mobilize harvesters into their lives mobilize laborers into their lives cause their souls to be harvested for christ in the name of jesus this one will serve the lord this one will follow god this one will work for the kingdom in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ father we thank you we give you praise and glory in jesus mighty name we pray amen if you're here this morning and you haven't received jesus as your lord and your savior i like to pray for you as you place your hand over your chest and pray with me and say lord jesus have mercy on me i'm a sinner i believe you died for me and rose up again Lord, as you died for me, I choose to live for you. Come into my life. Live in me. Fill me with your spirit and your power. I am yours in Jesus' name. If you've said the prayer, lift your hand up as I pray for you. Lord, thank you for everyone that you have called this morning. Bless them. Cause your hand to be mighty upon them. Cause them to be established in your faith and love. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Hallelujah.